hi guys so in this video i said i was going to explain how we actually render the to how we actually render what we've made in the api called to the ui and i said i was also going to explain what i wrote in the failure class and the failure class is just like the one i showed you during the error handling and it's just a simple class that takes in a string with a constructor and it returns this um, message back with the to string method so it's not it's not something fancy just a simple class with the constructor and um, the to string method override overriding this to string method meaning that i've changed what this to string method is actually supposed to do on a good day this to string method is supposed to do something like super dot to string but i'm changing that now and i'm telling it that what you're supposed to do is to just return message so that's what it's going to do so here in the main dot that uh to render something to the ui or what the user is going to see we first have our my app and essentially this is going to be material app the box debug debug show checked banner check check mode banner which is set to false so that it takes up the red band you see here that shows debug then you have your home and essentially you can actually change this i can just make this news and i can just change this to news too Well, I'm just introducing you to the possibility that at some point you can just like change it, the name of what this class is. It doesn't really need to be my app because sometimes when you work on projects, you want to customize the name of all your classes to correlate with what the app is actually doing. So it doesn't make sense that you're just calling it, maybe you're building a fintech app and instead of maybe writing something that's more related to the company's name or the company's vision, you're writing something like my app. It's just too generic. So but we can change it i'm just letting you know that you can change the name if you want to so here we're going to have our first page and what we're going to do is to initialize this variable here and why this is important is because after we initialize this variable here we actually want to tell the future builder that we c the future builder takes two parameters and i'm going to clear it out so that we can actually like rebuild it from scratch so i'm going to remove everything in the body okay yeah this is going to take a while so here we just have a scaffold that has a body so the scaffold we are going to use a future builder and why i'm using the future builder is because that's the only way i can actually like get what we've actually like done on the we like call it the back end of the flutter app so the future builder is what actually builds a future and builds it into ui so a future builder essentially what you need are just two parameters you need the builder itself and you need uh, the future so the future is what actually holds the network core you've made so in our own case this is our own future this final news api class you can see i'm actually calling this class calling this function in this class with the variable name news so i will just pass in the news as the future news i see that that's all right then the builder actually is what builds the ui so a builder takes um, two things and also the future builder needs to have a specific type so that it knows what it's doing and the type you actually pass into it is this one here yeah essentially this is what you're going to pass to it like yeah that's what you're going to be using so if i just put this here it's going to be fine then what a builder is actually going to take is one is going to be the context and the very next one is going to be the snapshots so we are going to get um, an async snapshot uh, yeah we are going to just get to take snapshots for now snapshots and then what the builder does is to build the ui like i said so first of all we want to check that if snapshot what snapshot helps us to do is to check different occurrences in what is happening at the back end so if we say snapshot dot has data 
new snapshot that has data it means if there's data then you should do something then if it does not have data you should do another thing but first of all i want to check if it has error if it has error and if it has error this resolves through and what we are going to do is to return a text essentially we are going to return a text and inside this text what we are going to do is snapshot dot data right yeah snapshot dot data dot uh, I think there should be something like an error no not that it's a string actually so if it has an error whatever the data is is supposed to be the error like it's going to, it's a, it has resolved to true that we have an error so essentially anything this is going to show us within here should be the error so the next thing we want to check is uh, if it does not have data so if snapshots if then we can now use this which i i want to check if it has data so if snapshots that has data is going to be so essentially what we want to do is to build a list because this is how we actually like see our app so this is actually a list of different articles so the way to build a list is um, return a list view builder and all these things that you you keep hearing list view builder future builder it just means that flutter with flutter is going to help you in doing the building and this one actually takes a context and it also takes an index and why it is taking an index is because it is going to use the index to actually like index things properly so something like uh when you get a list you have index in your list so it actually the index is actually being passed in here and the way to actually make sure of that is to give it an item count so item count we then have snapshots dot data dot length yeah because this is actually a list so now we want to build this so we are going to use our narrow function and what we want to show the user is going to be a, a list style there's something called a list style and what the list style is is this so i'm currently using a list style so we can pass in this this here is called the leading this this particular one is the leading this is the title this is the trailing and this here is the sub is this a subheading yeah something like that this is the heading i think this should be the subheading i'm forgotten the proper name that is being used for it in flutter so we're just going to see what it is like so i'm going to make a list style and the list style is going to take a leading a leading the leading is going to be this one you're seeing here this particular one here this is the leading and so since we know our leading is going to be a picture so currently there's a widget called circle avatar and that's what i'm going to be using and i'm going to set the background image to assets no i'm going to set it to a network image and the network image is going to be snapshot the data then you will then have an index that you can undo dots so now you see these different things this is what i was telling you that the from json method does so you see something like url to image url title source publish that description content author now if we go to the news model we're going to see the same thing author title description url url to image publish that content so that's essentially what it helps you to do it has converted it into that object now that we can actually like use so here we need the url to image but this is not just it we are not currently writing null safe code so we have to do the null check manually so we have null if it is equal to null they want to be sure give an empty string and essentially this will just be this blue picture you're seeing here if you see a blue picture it means that oh it didn't actually get a url for the picture so if you get the url it actually renders the picture so what we're going to have here now is uh, this the 
this is called a ternary operator so ternary operator just takes in a value and resolves between true or false whatever is true is returned on the right and whatever is false is returned on the left essentially that's just what it does so i should format this document so i see it properly okay i think i just have to return and to get everything back on track i'll return a center and i'll call this um, circle progress indicator this is that blue stuff you see spinning in the middle when it's still getting articles so i want to also put this in the center too that's this one is this was the one that actually showed us uh, there's no internet available so now i can actually do something like this I can format this document so i can see it better now and put a comma here so that we can format it properly yeah so we have our image the leading image so the next thing we want to do is um, the title and the title is going to be a text yes because that's what's supposed to be now we want to use snapshot snapshot we can do the data index dot title and then we check for this we check again just in case uh, so we get this that was gonna in a text yeah okay yeah I've, I can correct it now so sorry about that so next thing we have should be the sub yeah subtitle is actually the name of it so we're going to pass this and what I want to do is to change this to the author and I'm going to change this also to the author So the final thing we want to pass in is the trailing and the trailing here I'm going to use an icon button that was that button we clicked on and we actually went to somewhere on the web browser so the icon the icon I used was icon and it's going to be icons.launch that's all we used then um, there's also this um, compressed method here yeah. So, so this is actually going to be asynchronous. So I think and now I think I'm just going to go here to go and see how to actually implement this. I've implemented this as well, but I've forgotten how I did it. So URL launcher. Oh, sorry. So the URL launcher. We then see the syntax the easier. So asynchronous. So we are going to await. We are going to try can launch. Then if it can launch, we are going to give it snapshots. The data an index that uh, we're going to pass in the URL then we then check uh, if it can't if it can then we are going to launch then we're now going to pass the same thing into it so we're essentially going to pass this back inside here but if it is not then we are going to just throw an error and we are going to say can't launch it can't launch uh, this particular URL so we then cover this we close out the function so I think this should be enough 
to actually do it i hope fingers crossed to actually like run this again and it's actually going to give us the same result like from before so let's see it's loading and yes it has actually loaded and we have this again so now if i click on any button here it should just take me to my web browser and show me something yeah so that will be that for how to render stuff on the ui and i'm going to actually release this code and i'm still thinking of an exercise to give you guys to actually do so i think we are going to i'm going to see you guys in your task or when i'm grading your task when you guys submit thank you